Hello. There have been a whole lot of games over the years from Games Workshop, but not many of them have offered quite so much game for the size, money and time you would have to invest for this one. In this, it's my card versus your card. I'm Jordan, this is Jordan Sorcery, and today we're shuffling off our decks and playing Citadel Combat Cards. It's a short one this time as we're looking at Citadel Combat Cards, the game that Jervis Johnson designed for young kids who might want something to play in the back of the bus, in the schoolyard, or if you're sat in the back seat of the car on the long drive to Landudno for the family vacation. But don't worry, there is loads more Jordan Sorcery available this month on the channel, because every week I am releasing a new episode of my complete history of Warhammer. If you want to check that out, you can see it in the playlist right here. And I launched my Patreon this month as well, patreon.com slash Jordan Sorcery. If you have the means and inclination, you can go over and support me using the link in the description below. It was in 1988 that Games Workshop unleashed this new Jervis Johnson creation onto the unsuspecting youth of the Warhammer hobby. This was a game that was designed to be quick, easy and fun to play. The idea was simple. Two players shuffle up their decks of themed combat cards, then draw into their hand the top card on the pile. The player whose turn it was gets to choose one of the six stats for their battle ahead. You compare the stat between the cards, the highest wins and gets to go back into the deck, but the loser is killed. That card is out of the game. You keep taking turns choosing which characteristic to compare and killing cards until one player has nothing left in his deck and the other player is the mighty champion. It has been argued in some quiet corners that it's possible the game bears a certain similarity to the pre-existing title, Top Trumps. But, uh, yes, it's Top Trumps, but it's Citadel Top Trumps. In case you're not familiar with them, Top Trumps was a simple card game released in the late 70s, initially by a company called Dubrec and later by Waddington's. The rules were inspired by an even older game called Quartets that saw players ask each other for specific card values in order to complete a set. Top Trumps took the value matching component and introduced a range of themes. Dragsters, race cars, military vehicles, basically anything that you might consider super cool. Over the years, there would be innumerable sets of Top Trumps and countless relaunches from different publishers. But the rules stayed pretty much consistent the whole time. Compare your card values, highest wins. Johnson designed combat cards to be the Games Workshop equivalent of Top Trumps. Just as simple, but packed with all of that 40k and Warhammer goodness. During his lunch breaks, he had been wandering through the city of Nottingham, going into newsagents and toy shops, and he'd noticed that collecting cards had become increasingly popular with kids. He thought that that was a market that Games Workshop might be able to enter. This got me thinking, could Games Workshop make a similar product using all the amazing miniatures and lore we were creating? I reasoned that such a product would be a great way for younger customers to engage with our range of miniatures, and they would serve as a painting guide for older collectors. The combat cards themselves included six characteristics, weapon skill, strength, speed, bravery, intelligence and toughness. Each card featured a beautiful photograph of a Citadel miniature, and the figures that were chosen were drawn from a wild and wonderful set of different 40k and Warhammer miniatures available at the time. The six sets are themed by warriors, dwarfs, monsters, chaos, goblinoids, and the surprisingly broad Space War. All the cards are compatible, so if you've ever wanted to see, I don't know, a dwarf with a bow versus a space orc with a missile launcher, then you're in luck. And a bit cruel. The adverts for the cards describe them as being an ideal painting guide for adults, but I do not buy that at all, unless you are like the platonic ideal of heavy metal painter already. This essentially shows you an incredible paint job that you would have to be amazing to achieve. I guess at least they are very pretty pictures. As well as a photo, each card features a character name, and apparently Jervis Johnson had a lot of trouble coming up with enough names to cover all six decks. He said, Very quickly, I realized the challenge for me would be coming up with all the names and stats. 
No mean feat given the original range of cards numbered over 150 individuals. Some of my favourite cards include Gublub Manhammer the Orc, Droog Warfiend the Champion of Chaos and Stefan Duralak the Dwarf. Some of the decks released in the 88 edition would also have a bonus set of rules on the inside of the cover card, a sort of alternate game mode if you like. The first was Imposter. This was a bluffing game where you would play your card face down and then say what the stat was. Of course, your opponent could challenge you if they thought you were lying, or they would then play their card face down as well. There was a version called Duel to the Death. This was a little bit more complicated, which required a d6 roll, where you would use your weapon skill, your strength, and the enemy's toughness to see if you would hit and wound them. And then finally, there was All or Nothing, basically a solitaire version of the game, which wasn't really different, you just played against yourself. As is often the way, White Dwarf was bountiful with extra content and rules, offering up, as it did, two Jervis Johnson articles about combat cards following the release of these first sets. White Dwarf 114 had a new set of rules called Attack, which was far more complicated than the base game. Using 15 of your combat cards as troopers and one card as your general, you'd grab some plastic stands that you might have available from another GW game and then stand the cards upright. You deployed them on a chessboard and then fought to the death. The until now mysterious and inert icons at the bottom of the cards were actually given meaning here, indicators of which special rules a card had access to. So some of those cards might have magic armor or ranged attacks. White Dwarf 115 included rules for a game called Charge. This was a skirmish or dungeon crawler game for two to four players that would see you use the combat card as your character sheet again taking advantage of the special abilities coded to the icons on the cards. A second edition of the game was released in 1992 with five new decks, two of which were based on different GW game systems. Now you would be able to play combat cards using Man of War or Epic, alongside Orcs and Goblins, Space Marines and Warhammer. This edition was still fun enough to play because at least now it had mini vehicles in it, but the card design really did feel like a bit of a step down. The fun names were gone, as were the cool bonus icons and even the borders for the images on the cards. It all just felt a little bit dry. But that is nothing compared to the great parch that is 3rd edition. This has a new graphic design approach and it is arid. Still featuring lovely photography of even lovelier Citadel miniatures, but now there is just a coloured border and a simple description. Citadel was even dropped from the name of the game, and the amazing card backs were just completely removed. The rules were slightly different for this version as well, with each card only having one value on it, a points value. In your turn, you would choose a warband from your hand of five cards. Basically, you were looking to build sets of cards that had the same colored borders, and then you'd add up all the points of the warband that you played and compared it to your opponent. Sets for this version covered High Elves, Bretonians, Undead and Chaos Warriors from Warhammer Fantasy, and Chaos Space Marines, Dark Eldar, Orcs and Space Marines from 40k. In 2017, Games Workshop would restructure the game again for a further new edition, following the release of a new app-based version of the game as well by Well Played Games. This one would have a few more complicated rules, rules that were very… rules. The game includes deck building, wounds, ranged, melee and psychic attack stats, upgrade cards, unit traits and special rules. Eight factions from 40k are present and additional game objectives, advancements and currencies are all available. The decks released for this version were 40k themed only and covered the classic Space Marines vs Chaos Space Marines matchup. The rules for the fourth edition of the card game weren't exactly the same as the app but they were more complicated than any version of the tabletop game we'd seen before. Each card had a battlefield role like an HQ or Elite, and you would deploy cards at specific times to buff nearby cards with different bonuses. This was a more strategically oriented game to play. One thing that I do think is very fun is that they brought back character names for the app and the card game. It's good to see you, Zafek the Shadowed. So there you go, a very quick retrospective on Citadel's combat cards and the four editions that have been released to date. I hope that you've enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to leave a like, to comment and subscribe on the channel. And of course, you can check out my Patreon if you really, really liked it or want to support the other stuff that I'm doing. I've got more Warhammer history on the way. And of course, 
the history of fighting fantasy is just around the corner. I'm very excited about that one. Thank you very much for watching. I am Jordan, and this is Jordan Sorcery. Giovanni Marmalodi. I choose you.